This is Mountain Health Today. I'm Ted Owens, your host, and my guest today is Dr. Brian Evans. Uh, Dr. Evans is the Chief Medical Officer of the Tahoe Forest Health System, who brings this program uh, to you. Dr. Evans, uh, so good to have you here with me. Uh, Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Today we're going to be talking about the Cancer Center at Tahoe Forest, the uh, Gene Upshaw Memorial Tahoe Forest Cancer Center. And I know there's some history there we're going to talk about. But before we begin, uh, as a chief medical officer, I'd like to ask you in your realm and in your experience as a physician and an administrator, how special is it having a cancer center of this caliber in the North Lake Tahoe region? You know, I I have to tell you, Ted, I I know that everybody who is involved in the cancer program, really everyone that is involved in Tahoe Forest is incredibly proud of the kind of cancer care that we're providing at Tahoe Forest, at the Gene Upshaw, and it's an extraordinary facility. And what's going on inside that facility with the the expertise, the people that we have, just, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And so if you visit it, if you've walked into that place, it is a remarkable place. So it's not just uh, pride, but it's also tremendous gratitude to the many people who helped make that a possibility and the people that are providing extra, extraordinary care to our patients every single day. Now, um, some folks, uh, football fans in particular, might wonder why Gene Upshaw, mm. a former Oakland Raider, um, decorated Oakland Raider, um, why his name is on the building. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some history there, as, as I know you know. Um, but uh, Mr. Upshaw, Gene Upshaw, had a second home in the North Lake Tahoe area and uh, frequented the Truckee area regularly at another home mm-hmm. back east. And uh, unfortunately, he'd been out uh, uh, on a visit and had some lower back pain and uh, went to Tahoe Forest Health System and unfortunately was diagnosed with stage five or stage four pancreatic cancer, very serious, and uh, unfortunately passed away. And his wife and family were were so uh, impressed with the ser- the service that they received and and the care that was given to him that they stayed involved with the health system. Mm-hmm. And later, Dr. Larry Heifetz, who had thought he had retired mm-hmm. and moved to the Truckee area after a long career down at Cedar sinai uh, uh, started a cancer program in, in the North Lake Tahoe area, which has evolved to uh, what we see there today. Mm-hmm. That's a special story, and that's, it's, a, it's just so special to have that level of service in a rural environment. Well, the legacy of Gene Upshaw and the Upshaw family generally, as well as the many other families who contributed their time, their energy, and certainly their resources to help create that cancer program is something we're, I mean, just unbelievably grateful for. And also Dr. Heifetz, who you mentioned, who uh, really got the ball rolling. So um, I don't know that everyone is aware of how fortunate we are as a community to have a cancer program, a cancer center of that caliber in our community because it, it allows us to do things that other communities, especially in rural communities, simply cannot do typically. Um, we are bringing the absolute forefront of science and cancer care to the patients of this area. Uh, they do not have to travel long distances to go to large oncology centers in urban areas. Uh, they can get the same treatment right in their own backyard. So uh, really a, an unbelievable legacy and I'm just happy to be part of it. I, I know that also philanthropy, philanthropy plays a very large role mm-hmm. uh, in the Gene Upshaw Cancer Center. Um, for example, maybe you can share with us uh, some of the programs I, I'm aware of, uh, all funded by philanthropy that are not funded by insurance. And yeah. so things that help cancer patients, whether it's mm-hmm. uh, uh, mental health assistance or uh, how to select a wig if you need to do that, or or mm-hmm. how to apply makeup. It's it's everyday things that people don't normally think about. Mm-hmm. That's kind of rare, I would say. It is. In a cancer center as well, especially it, in a rural environment, much less urban. Absolutely. Well, and I think that people, when they think about having cancer and what they have to deal with, they think first about surgery, they think about medicines, and obviously those are critically important to the proper care of cancer patients. But there's so much more that goes into it. Um, and you mentioned you know, the, the, the social things that, that are 
important when people are dealing with cancer. And it's really their whole family. It's not just the patient, it's the family that's involved in this fight. Um, so we have navigators, we have all kinds of social services that are there for people to support them emotionally, spiritually, and uh, we really try to tend to the, the needs of the patient and the family as a whole. Uh, we have people that volunteer their time, we have extraordinary professionals who are very well trained who, who know what the patients are going through and uh, can help them with it. And um, there's also um, uh, opportunities to benefit families of a or caregivers of, mm -hmm. of a cancer patient. There's a lot of support uh, for their presence mm -hmm. as well. I know that's provided through, uh, through the foundation. Yes. Um, in your observation, uh, let's just a little bit of a commentary on the team mm -hmm. uh, as the chief medical officer. Uh, pretty rare to have an assemblage like that? It, it's remarkable. We have, you know, when you go to the, the morning huddle, there's a morning huddle in the cancer center every day to talk about patient care and what's gonna be happening for the, the care of every patient in the cancer center that day. Uh, and you, you have a whole team of people, certainly including medical oncologists, radiation oncologists who do radiation therapy, very highly experienced uh, pharmacy team and nursing team, uh, technologists, and then they work with many other specialty physicians and others. Um, cancer is scary. I mean, people really are, uh, you know, they, they don't want to think about cancer. They certainly don't want to think about getting cancer, but it's something we all have to really face in our lives with our family members and, uh, and deal with. The good news is there's so much more happening now with cancer treatments going forward. Uh, we've been able to leverage all of that and stay at the absolute forefront of science to make sure that our patients are getting the best care possible, their best chance of survival, and having a high quality life. Well, I, I'm exceptionally proud of, of the work that's done up there by the team and, and very blessed that, that we have something like that, uh, of that magnitude and, and structure in, in a rural environment. It's very, very special. This is Mountain Health Today. I'm Ted Owens, your host, and this program is brought to you by the Tahoe Forest Health System. And my, my guest host today is Dr. Brian Evans, Chief Medical Officer at Tahoe Forest. Uh, so good to have you here, Brian. Thanks Brian so much, today. Dad. Appreciate being here. You bet. And thanks so much for watching. This is Mountain Health Today. I'm Ted Owens, your host, and my guest today is Dr. Brian Evans, Chief Medical Officer of the Tahoe Forest Health System, who also produces this program. Uh, Dr. Evans, so good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Ted. Well, real briefly, for the folks at home, you're the Chief Medical Officer. Folks may not know what that is. And also, you are a doctor. You had a career before you went into administration. Share with us. I'm an ER doctor by training and uh, worked in Western Nevada County doing emergency medicine shifts in Grass Valley for about 15 years, roughly. Um, and then I switched gears and ended up doing administrative work and joined Tahoe Forest Health System at the end of 2022. Well, we're very fortunate to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the Gene Upshaw Memorial Tahoe Forest Cancer Center. And we have the director of the Cancer Center with us, who's gonna join us in just a moment. Uh, Derek Baden. Uh, I'm going to bring him in. There he is. Derek, how are you? I'm doing great, Ted. Thanks for having me. We're, we're very pleased to have you with us. There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, Dr. Evans and I have uh, spoken about uh, several times uh, the, the very uniqueness of a cancer center like this in a rural environment. Uh, let's start off with sharing why and what makes it so unique. Well, I, I think the, uh, the what makes it so unique is the, the people that we employ in the, in the cancer program. We have an extremely high caliber of, of staff, physicians, and, and support staff that really sets us aside from a lot of other uh, cancer programs in the country. Derek, uh, before we really get into it, let's uh, have you share a little bit about yourself, your journey, uh, how you became a director of a cancer center, where you began, why you decided healthcare. Sure. Uh, well, why I decided healthcare, uh, it's a second career for me. I started out with oil and gas and realized that wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. I felt I could do more to give back uh, to to the community, to the universe, to 
uh, to everyone. And uh, that's uh, how I decided to get into healthcare and then nursing specifically. So I started out as a, a bedside nurse at a trauma center in Oklahoma. I worked uh, neuro, worked ICU, uh, worked emergency department, and transitioned into uh, house supervisor and management at that point. Um, and then uh, at one point was uh, given an opportunity to act as a, a clinical manager for a cancer program. Absolutely fell in love with all things oncology and then kept furthering my career until I had an opportunity to become the, the director of the Gene Upshaw Memorial Tahoe Forest Cancer Center. And uh, things are going great. Well, we're, we're pleased to have you here. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Evans. He'll have a few questions for you. Yeah, you know, Derek, I, I want to ask you this because so many of us have a personal experience with cancer or have a family member who's been through a cancer journey. What are some of the things that you and your team do at the Gene Upshaw Cancer Center to help people, not just with the diagnosis and the medical needs, but all the other things that go along with that? Because it can be a really scary process for many of us. It can. Uh, and at the, the cancer center here, we really take a holistic approach to treating the patient. So we not only treat the disease itself, but we treat the patient and the caregiver. And some of those things that we do, we have clinical psychologists on staff. We do uh, acupuncture, massage, biofeedback. Uh, we have a very robust financial navigation program to help remove financial toxicity uh, that goes along sometimes with medical care. Um, and then. Uh, we have a beautiful facility that really is welcoming and, and is, is not doesn't appear to be very clinical. So when the patients come in, they feel warm, they feel, you know, well taken care of. They have that boutique experience uh, each and every time they come through the doors. And Derek, uh, it's true that some of the, the uh, programs that you just described are not covered uh, by health insurance. Uh, they're provided for by the community through the foundation, true? Correct. We uh, all of our oncology support programs are funded through philanthropy. Uh, for example, uh, we we have Palisades Mountain Run that we do every year as a fundraiser. We've in the in the past done Best of Tahoe Chefs, and uh, this year we're doing a, what's called Giving Tuesday through the foundation, where the money that we raise from Giving Tuesday comes back to the uh, oncology support programs, and we're really excited to be a part of that this year. You know, Derek, it's it's so impressive walking into the Gene Upshaw Cancer Center because it's, it's a beautiful place. There's a ton of art. There's so many little touches that make it more comfortable for patients. And there's so much technology there, including radiation oncology, a beautiful infusion center. What are you most proud of? I, I, I know the team, when they meet every morning for huddle and talk about all the different patients that are coming in, you can just see the the passion and, and you have it too. So So what is it that fuels that? Well, picking a favorite is like saying which of your children is your favorite because I really love all things oncology. Um, from a technology standpoint, I think the thing that sets us apart, we have an amazing linear accelerator. It's called a true beam linear accelerator. And coupled with that, we have um, a treatment platform that is, uh, well, it's, a, it's called the Six Degrees of Freedom Couch. And it allows us really, really precise setups each and every time uh, for our patients undergoing radiation therapy. A lot of places uh, just can't afford some of the technology that we've been blessed with uh, being able to afford. And um, and, and having those uh, really high caliber technical pieces that you find in the tertiary care center. We're going to take a little break here. We've enjoyed our conversation with Derek Baden from the Tahoe Forest Health System, specific to cancer, and Dr. Brian Evans. We'll be right back. today on Ted Owens with Dr. Brian Evans of the Tahoe Forest Health System. And our guest is uh, Derek Baden, who is the director of the Gene Upshaw Memorial Tahoe Forest Cancer Center. We've been talking about cancer care. Uh, let's bring Derek back in. And Dr. Evans, I think you have a question you'd like to ask Derek and I, we'll start. I do, Derek. I want to know a little bit more about how you collaborate, how the team collaborates on patient care. You know, I've seen a remarkable huddle process that you do uh, every morning, talking about the patients that are coming in. And, and there's 
so many different experts on the team at the cancer centers. How, how does that work in a collaborative way? I think the what works for us or what we call our special sauce is we meet every morning as a group with all disciplines in the building um, and talk through every patient that comes in every day. Uh, we, we discuss labs, we discuss values, we discuss weight change or dosage change. So it really disseminates information easily. So everybody that uh, touches that patient has a better understanding of what's going on with that patient. The progression of care is very unique as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about the tumor boards, what it is, how it works, how it functions. Sure. We partner with one of our cancer care network, well, with the cancer care network, UC Davis, and we have tumor boards every day over the lunch hour where we discuss site-specific cancers and present cases and also uh, listen to and participate in presentations of other providers with unique, unusual, or cases that need more collaboration. So fair to say uh, that your patients receive the benefit of multiple opinions without having to shop them. Sure. If we have a case that uh, is unusual or interesting, we put it forth to a, a larger group and, and talk through it from really start to finish from pathology, diagnostic imaging, and then on to treatment. You know, Derek, one of the challenges of providing healthcare, really in any specialty in rural communities, is uh, recruiting and retaining the very best, uh, whether it's physicians, nurses, or anybody else that's on the team. And that is absolutely true in oncology care, especially with the huge variety of different disciplines that, that we need um, at the Gene Upshaw. So what what has helped you and what, what has been uh, most necessary to really recruit and retain all those those top minds? I think having a program that sets itself apart from the other programs in the country um, allows us to be much more effective in our recruitment strategies. Uh, once the patients or once the, uh, the potential employee comes on site and mm -hmm. meets with the team, tours the center, uh, talks to us about our philosophy of care, the recruitment challenges that a lot of places face kind of fall away uh, in regards to oncology. Uh, we have a very talented, very educated staff. 85% um, of the nurses in this building have a, a terminal oncology degree or a certification called an OCN. Every uh, nurse has an ONS chemotherapy and biocert. Uh, we have the, the uh, as Dr. Thomas Simrad says, we have a lot of uh, alphabet uh, soup behind our names. So I think we really promote every position in this building as a profession a career, not just a job, and we invest a lot in uh, education programs, conferences, uh, so everybody is up to date on the latest and greatest, and um, it's it's a uh, it's a big uh, a big endeavor. You know, as I've learned about the cancer center, uh, I've learned about the community support for it and, and the history of it. Would the would the center even exist without the support of this community? Not at all. Um, you know, it was solely because of a, a large bond issue and and the programs that we have are solely funded from philanthropy. So without our community, we wouldn't have a program and we especially wouldn't have a caliber, high caliber program that we have here. Uh, Derek, a question I have. It's very unique to be in an environment like this, a rural environment like this. But it, again, it's a unique environment being that it's a resort community. Uh, tell us a little bit about the patient composition that you have. Certainly you have local patients, but we have second homeowners and we have people to the north of us and people to the west and east of us. What does it look like? So our primary catchment area is about 8,000 square miles. We serve a very, very large uh, uh, land mass. Um, something that a lot of people don't realize, only about 25% of our actual volume comes from Truckee proper. The rest come from our surrounding areas, you know, Quincy, Portola, Reno, South Lake, and then we extend all the way down to, to Mammoth and um, and even over towards the Grass Valley area. So we have a really large service area um, and we face a lot of challenges uh, with people coming from afar uh, related to access to care and then just the ability to, to get here at times. Uh, you mentioned a patient that travels as far as Arizona for, for treatment. Why would that be? Well, they've been to other cancer centers and um, they, they like how they're treated. They like that they are not just a, a, a cog in a machine, but they're, they're a person and not just a number. So we try to really have those relational 
um, models of care rather than a transactional model of care. And it really shines through and the patients appreciate that. So they're willing to travel a little farther and then um, make some additional sacrifices to make sure they get the best care. Well, thank you. Uh, Derek Baden, director of the uh, Gene Upshaw Memorial Tahoe Forest Cancer Center. Thank you so much for being with us. This is Mountain Health Today, and I'm Ted Owens, your host. Big thank you to Dr. Brian Evans, Chief Medical Officer of the Tahoe Forest Health System. Thanks for joining us.